Hello, and welcome to this lecture on Global Positioning System Fundamentals. The learning objectives for this lesson are to understand the different segments of GPS, understand the basic ideas of how GPS provides a location on the Earth's surface, be familiar with causes of GPS receiver inaccuracy, and identify methods for improving GPS receiver accuracy. Before we begin, let's go over a little background about GPS and coordinates. Longitude and latitude are angles measured relative to the plane of the prime meridian and to the plane of the equator. The angles are measured in degrees expressed as degrees, minutes, seconds, or as what is known as decimal degrees. If you are already familiar with using a GPS device, you have probably already seen latitude and longitude in a decimal degree format. The surface expression of lines of longitude and latitude form a graticule of meridians and parallels, respectively. So, the components of the GPS need to know where they are relative to this geographic or what is known as a spherical coordinate system. A formal definition of GPS is that it is the system to calculate the position or coordinate on the Earth's surface. As it is a system, GPS is composed of three segments. The space segment, the control segment, and the user segment. In the following slides, I explain each segment in further detail. The space segment is a constellation of at least 24 satellites. Each satellite follows one of six distinct orbits around the Earth. Each satellite circles the Earth in 12 hours, thus ensuring the satellites are visible at any time anywhere on the Earth. And the satellites are continually broadcasting codes to GPS receivers, a topic I will discuss shortly. The GPS control segment consists of a global network of ground facilities that track the GPS satellites, monitor their transmissions, perform analysis, and send commands and data to the constellation. The user segment is what you are perhaps most familiar with. The user segment represents the many applications of GPS technology to everyday use, such as those shown in this graphic. GPS can be what is considered an, an invisible technology in that it has become so integrated into daily life. These images are perhaps what you are more familiar with in terms of your interaction with GPS technology. For example, a GPS data logger that you might use for tracking how far you walked or ran, or a GPS receiver that you might use for going hiking. Keep in mind that devices like these are what are known as GPS receivers, and they are not GPS unto itself. Here is an overview of how GPS works and described in five steps. GPS is a ranging system. A GPS receiver, or the user, detects ranging signals from several satellites. Each transmission is time-tagged, and each transmission contains the satellite's position. The time of arrival is compared to the time of transmission. The delta T, or time difference, is multiplied by the speed of light to obtain the range. Each range puts the user on a sphere about the satellite. The intersections of several spheres yields the user position. In the following slide, I discuss satellite ranging to make sure that you understand the concept. GPS receivers calculate distances to the satellites as a function of the amount of time it takes for the satellite signals to reach the ground. The velocity of the radio signals, like other forms of electromagnetic radiation, 
is known to be the speed of light. To determine the time difference between transmission and reception, the receiver must be able to tell precisely when the signal was transmitted and when it was received. GPS satellites are equipped with extremely accurate atomic clocks, so the timing of the transmissions is always known. Receivers contain cheaper clocks. The radio signals broadcast by the satellites carry timing codes that inform receivers of transmission times, along with the almanac data that describes the shape of the satellite orbits. To make sure that you understand these ideas, the following is a simple video that I think you will find useful for understanding the concepts behind how GPS locates positions on the Earth's surface. To locate itself, a GPS receiver must find the distance to three satellites of known positions. If the receiver finds that it is X miles from one satellite, it knows that it must be somewhere on an imaginary sphere, with the satellite as the center and a radius of X. If the receiver can generate these spheres for two satellites, it knows it can only be located where the surfaces of the two spheres intersect. The two spheres overlap in a ring of possible receiver positions. By generating a sphere for a third satellite, the receiver narrows its possible positions down to two points. The receiver dismisses the point located in space, leaving only one possible position. It is important to understand issues related to GPS accuracy. In this regard, the first item to be aware about is GPS accuracy and GPS receiver types. GPS receivers are generally considered to be in three categories. The first are considered low-end or recreational grade. These GPS receivers are what you would use for things like going hiking and generally have an accuracy of about 10 feet. The second type are what are known as mapping grade. These are somewhat more expensive units and are designed for geographic information system or GIS type mapping applications. The final type are high-end survey grade GPS receivers. These types are very expensive and designed for precise surveying applications where sub-centimeter accuracy is of vital importance. For example, surveying the location of a bridge or road that may have life or death consequences if it is not surveyed precisely and accurately. In addition to accuracy issues caused by the GPS receivers, there are several other items that can cause inaccuracy as demonstrated in this list. In the following slides, I discuss examples of common issues that cause inaccuracy in GPS signals. Atmospheric delay is the idea that the satellite signal bounces around when traveling through the ionosphere and troposphere. Because of this, the satellite signal has increased the time to reach the Earth and thus altering the ranging calculation that you learned about previously in this lecture, and ultimately altering the calculated position. A multipath error is the idea that the GPS signal is reflected off objects before reaching the receiver. Thus again, modifying the time the signal takes to travel from the satellite to the receiver. One obvious inaccuracy source is obstruction. GPS receivers do not work well in areas with too many obstacles, such as forests, cities, and steep mountains. Given the fact that there are many factors that can cause inaccuracy in GPS signals, methods have been developed for improving GPS accuracy. In the following slides, I describe two of those methods, differential GPS and wide area augmentation system, or WAS. A differential GPS is the idea of using a fixed location with a known coordinate to compare with a roving GPS receiver. For example, and shown in this figure, a base station is set up on a precisely known location. The base station receiver calculates the difference between its true position and the position calculated from the satellite signals. Difference is then applied to the GPS receiver data. Mobile GPS positions are adjusted according to this differential info. 
In the following slides, I explain this concept further. The ideas behind differential GPS is that it is assumed two GPS receivers within the same area are receiving the same inaccuracies due to atmospheric delay or other issues that were previously discussed in this lecture. Thus, the GPS base station is set up on a well-known point location that can determine the amount of error being received and calculate a correction by comparing the actual well-known position with the calculated position using data linkages. The base station can then send corrections to the mobile receiver so that the mobile receiver is recording the correct position. The following images graphically demonstrate this idea. The top image shows the positions calculated at the same time instant by the base station shown on the left and the mobile receiver shown on the right. The base station calculates the correction needed to eliminate the error, in this case a 10 meter error. The correction is then applied either in real time or later with what is known as post-processing to correct mobile receiver calculated positions. The second method for improving GPS accuracy is Wide Area Augmentation System, or WAS. It is a system of satellites and ground stations that provide GPS signal corrections. The following is a description of WAS taken from the Garmin.com website. WAS consists of multiple ground reference stations positioned across the United States that monitor GPS satellite data. Two master stations located on either coast, collect data from the reference stations and create a GPS correction message. This correction accounts for GPS satellite orbit and clock drift plus signal delays caused by the atmosphere and ionosphere. The corrected differential message is then broadcast through one of two geostationary satellites or satellites with a fixed position over the equator. The information is compatible with the basic GPS signal structure, which means any WASP enabled GPS receiver can read the signal. In this lecture, you learned about Global Positioning System or GPS fundamentals. You should now understand the different segments of GPS, the user segment, the control segment, and the space segment. You should also understand the basic ideas of how GPS provides a location on the Earth's surface using satellite ranging. Furthermore, you should be familiar with the causes of GPS receiver inaccuracy, such as atmospheric delay, multipath errors, and obstruction. Finally, you should be able to identify methods for improving GPS receiver accuracy, such as differential GPS and wide area augmentation system, or WAS. The following are references used in preparing this lecture. If you enjoyed this lecture or have any comments or questions, feel free to contact me at the email address below. Thank you for watching.